Albert Einstein defined the definition of insanity as doing the same thing over and over again, but expecting different results. Over the years, Bungie's healthy study of balls, or testology, has developed into a consuming testomania. From orbs of light to dunking on bosses, here's a brief history of Bungie's obsession with spheres. The root of Bungie's affinity for balls can be traced to Halo 2, where you could find a soccer ball as an easter egg. Later, we would get a griff ball and even a kill ball in Halo 3. After countless ball-related feuds with their employer, Microsoft, Bungie was forced to break ties and stop their work on the Halo series. They would have to take their developing interest in spheres elsewhere. With Destiny 1 in development, Bungie now had full control in terms of sphere implementation. The first ball in the game would be the fan named Beta Ball because of how buggy it behaved in the early months of development. One of the major features of the game were motes of light, which could be used as currency. In the final fight with Crota, a giant ball looms over the Ascendant Realm, almost serving as an eerie glimpse of what is to come. It wasn't until the Taken King expansion where Bungie could not resist adding an overabundant amount of balls to the game. Suddenly, balls were everywhere, and it wasn't without notice. Cade, a beloved character in the series, took a stand against the spherical surge. That base in minutes. How long would we last? Until we understand what we're dealing with. They are taken. Eris, get your rock off my map. As a lone hunter, Cade had no defense against Bungie's onslaught and was strategically assassinated in a prison breakout by one of Bungie's employees. In one of the first missions, the player is forced to put their trust in a strange ball, which leads them through Oryx's dreadnought and brings them to safety. This mission introduces a new scourge to the system, Taken Blight Balls. These balls practically infect all the planets in the solar system and pose a serious threat throughout the entire series. Not only does the beginning and end of the King's Fall raid include excessive ball handling and dunking, but there's a secret basketball court located inside the raid, almost serving as a grim reminder of Bungie's relentless spherical craving. In the Rise of Iron expansion, one of the first strikes available is the Sepix Perfected Strike. Bungie enhances one of the long dead servitors, and Chiro 4, who is yet another Exo Hunter resisting the inexorable tide of balls, refers to the spherical Sepix Prime as God. I can make a guess. Maybe an offer to the other devils, a, a show of power. You know, in Siva we trust, and in Siva all things are possible. Get in there, and show them that their god is nothing but metal and tech. Finally, Destiny 1 had reached its final expansion, and Destiny 2 was completed. At this point, Bungie lost whatever control they had over their growing infatuation with balls. The game brought a staggering amount of spheres to the universe, with innocent looking spheres stashed all over the tower. There are a total of 5 balls in the main area alone, and possibly more to come. Bungie's intense affinity for balls lost all subtlety, and at the core of every strike and mission, there were balls. You take down a walker. Balls. You infiltrate Rasputin. Balls. Infinite Sundown. Balls. 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 In the end, none of the balls previously mentioned even mattered, because after all, the game was a ball.